Welcome to our tribute suite. Great to have you here. Thank you for having me. And uh, you know, after seeing this film, I you know my first reaction seeing you on the screen, which took me a couple minutes to realize it was even you. Yeah. Um, you ain't Captain America in this movie, my friend. Nope. Uh, wow. Really? You look at the script. Did you even know anything about Kuklinski when you started? Yeah. I mean, I, I've been friends with Ariel for a few years, and I remember when he told me he was doing the movie, uh, you know, four or five years ago, and I said, I've seen that documentary. I love that documentary. This guy's what a great character. Good for you. Great movie. Um, and then, you know, he, he got the movie put together, and, and James Franco initially had my role. Um, and then some scheduling conflicts happened, and he fell out, and uh, Ariel called me and said, listen, I'm in a bit of a pickle, and can you help me out? And I, I read the script, and I said, you know what, yeah, man, this, this could be really fun. Is it a is it a pressure on you, Chris, to play somebody who's based on a real-life character? Well, sure. I mean, it's it's I, the, the good thing is that there wasn't a whole lot about him online as far as, you know, who he was and who I had to, you know, commit to and, and who was going to see it and judge you know there, there really isn't much on the guy it's more uh, intimidating to play opposite guys like michael shannon you know to say instead of playing a real character i have to stand next i have to share the screen with this guy you know we're both playing killers who's going to be a more convincing killer <laughs> me or one of the scariest men on the planet um you know michael shannon just he owns the oxygen he's a very intense man um and, and to me, that was the scariest part, is trying to somehow um, match him. Well, what impressed you most about Shannon? Because you're right, I mean, I'm watching Boardwalk Empire. And, yeah. I mean, everything he does. Everything, everything he does is he, just... He can just do nothing, and you just... I, I watch it. I'm interested, you know? Um, I, the, the, the thing about Michael is his, uh, his commitment. He's uncompromising, you know? When he comes to set, he's there to work. He's not joking around and laughing in between takes. He's in a certain zone, he's in a certain headspace, and he's there until you rap. Once you rap, he's the nicest guy in the world. Cupcake. You can go to dinner and laugh it up. Uh, but when he's on set, he's there to work. And, and it really is um, it's inspiring as an actor to say, yes, look what this guy's doing. That's what it should be. I mean, he, if, if, if we're running short on time, he will not be rushed. You know, if, if we don't have time, we'll do it tomorrow. We're not just going to squeeze this in. Um, he, he really has a certain commitment that just kind of breeds allegiance. How'd you like your look? It's fun, right? I mean, that was another beauty of, of you know, there, there really wasn't much online about how he looks, so we kind of had some freedom, and and, uh, and Ariel and I had some fun. And working in an ice cream truck, that's got to be fun. Is that like an, you know, a long-time ambition of yours to be an ice cream man? <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, maybe not that, maybe not with, like, bodies in the cooler, but, you know, uh, it's it, it was fun to kind of get comfortable in that space, you know, to spend a few days just moving around the truck and just kind of making the truck your second home. It's a strange environment. I was going to ask you, how do you learn to drive one of those things? Yeah, oh, God, it was such a pog. It was so terrible. We had a couple scenes where I had to drive it, and I... I, I I embarrassed myself a couple times. I so you didn't keep it at the end, basically? I asked. Yeah. They said no. No, yeah. come on. Really? That's, that's too bad. That's Can't be driving bad. that thing around LA. Yeah, it was funny. We just had Ray Liotta in here earlier this morning, and I said to Ray, I go, you know, you, you pretty well corner the market on playing bad guys. There's no question. But, you know, we were saying, Mark, Michael Shannon, like, having people like Ray Liotta, Michael Shannon on set, like, on yeah. and on, there's so many great people in this yeah. movie. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's 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 why I jumped on board. You know, I kind of jumped on board in the eleventh hour, and it's always intimidating to jump on board without having enough prep time. But you know, you see the cast, and you think, how can I say no to this? And Winona. Yeah, isn't she great? She, yeah. And she doesn't age. No. She looks like the same she did twenty years ago. She you know? really does. Yeah. Like I was looking at her, and I'm going, man, yeah. no, no, this is not right. Yeah. yeah time machine or yeah. something going on here. Um, it's got to be fun for you, Chris, to be able to go from these. I know we've talked about this before, but the big, huge blockbusters. I mean, God, the Avengers, holy mackerel, and Captain yeah. America, like the money that that pulls in, and you know, the, and that kind of stuff. But then, yet you are able to also do what you really love and go and do these independent films, and you know, your pat, your passion has to be there you know what's yeah. that like for you as an actor to be able to have that flexibility oh god it's it's invaluable you know i'm i'm not i've been pretty candid in the past i'm not a huge fan of the studio movies you know just giant the, the from soup to nuts you know i i the, the the process of making the movies is very tedious and sometimes the final product becomes you know the, the original vision becomes kind of homogenized and and then the the promoting process is a real chore and, and it just the, the whole process isn't you know I, I much prefer these smaller films are just kind of more my speed so you do these giant movies and and luckily thank God uh, 
these movies were good, the, the big studio movies, because they they're not always. Um, and they came out so well, I couldn't be more lucky. Uh, but it affords you the opportunity to go do the smaller things that you want to do. So I, I really am in, I'm in such a perfect situation right now where I get to go do these movies, you know, every six months or so with, with a group of people that I love. I love Marvel, I love the group of the Avengers, and, uh, and then in my downtime I get to go make movies like this. So I just, you know, I couldn't be luckier. We knew the Avengers was going to be big time, but did you even expect that kind of reaction in box office for that movie? No, God, no. I mean, I, I go into every movie thinking it's going to be the worst thing in the world. You know, you hope it's going to be great, but the fact is, if they were, if it was easier to do, there'd be more good movies. Um, but making a movie is a giant collaboration of all these creative people, all these cooks in the kitchen, and it's unfortunate but true. Often, when I go to the movies, you leave disappointed. You know, it's just like, man. Most times, the best movies I see are at festivals like this. You go to a big blockbuster summer movie. What are the chances of you walking out disappointed? Pretty good, in my opinion. Um, and, and so when you jump on board to a giant studio film, you think, what are our chances? What are the chances that this is going to come out good? Um, and it's unfortunately slim. Um, so the, the fact that it came out the way it did, that Joss, man, that Joss Whedon. God, Joss Whedon. Thank God for Joss Whedon. He's amazing. He's so good. He's a film in the festival now, you know, much ado about Yeah, that. I and just saw him. I mean, he, it's, it's him, man. It's him. Without that guy, these things don't work. So I just, I owe that guy everything. But you know what? It's a, it's a good group of people in that movie, too. Like, mm -hmm. you look at somebody like Chris Hemsworth, who's a doll. Mark Ruffalo, who's yeah. a good guy. Like, you really look at this, the cast that, that he put together. Yeah. And yes, you're all playing these amazing superheroes that all the teens and everybody are like, yeah, I love the whole <laughs> Captain America. But when you look at it, you're all good, really good, nice people in that. <laughs> like, seriously. It's all of a sudden. <laughs> We're Nazis. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> That's what I thought. It's okay, the truth comes out. So how do you do it, Chris? Like, you've got to be really pumped up to play, you know, Captain America. I'm and then dreading you... it. This is, this is what I keep thinking. We start Cap 2 in March, so come January, I have to get back in that routine. And all I'm thinking about is the future movies. Like, God, how am I going to keep getting big. It's such a chore. It's such a chore. I hate to admit it, but it's not easy. <laughs> it's months and months of just lifting heavy stuff and not looking forward to it. But, you know, it's worth it because I am happy with the movies and I do love the character. So come January, my life is going to be different. Back in the gym. Back in the donuts. gym. Getting eight hours. I mean, it's, it's such a commitment. It really is top to bottom. It's not just lifting. It's, it's Sleep is so important. Sleep is so Your diet okay. is important. It's just... It's a complete commitment, and so it's, you know, it's a chore, but, you know, what am I saying? It's good oh problems, to, good problems to have, yeah, what am seriously. I saying? Oh, it's just so difficult. Oh, yeah. uh, and, I'd and much rather be in the coal mines. <laughs> if you need a Mrs. America, what I'm there a for you. Um, you know, you look at your career of men. Like I say, you're mixing it up. You do so many great things. What was it for you, Chris, that was the defining role that basically changed your life? Hmm. Hmm. I guess Captain America. I mean, I, I might have said Fanta Johnny Storm in Fantastic Four. That was kind of the first time I had a, it was a big studio movie. And, you know, I think after that movie, I, I got, you know, there's little, there's tears to your career. There's like, you know, stepping stones. And I think that was the first stepping stone that allowed me to be in another arena of, of you know, on studios lists. So I guess on, on, a, on an industry scale, I'd say Captain, or Fantastic Four, I'd say on a more public scale, probably Captain America. I was your co-star in Fantastic Four. And year. you nailed it. I was like a reporter. Were you? Can you miss me? But <laughs> I was there. I was on set for that in Vancouver. We shot that. Yeah. Um, coming up next. Now, you also have uh, something with Allison Pill, I understand? Yes, yes. Snowpiercer. Snowpiercer is, uh, it's, it's Allison Pill. It's Ed Harris and uh, Tilda Swinton and Octavia Spencer. And uh, it was a really interesting movie. It's very different. Very different, but I think it's going to be fantastic. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Sure. Uh, it's, um, well, it takes place in the future. It's kind of a heightened reality. All of society lives on a train. The world is frozen over, um, and it's kind of like an allegory for social structures where the poorest people are in the back of the train, and as you move forward in the train, classes increase, and there becomes a, there's a revolution, a revolt from the people in the back of the train to the front of the train. Um, and it, it really is... It's a very clever movie. 
Um, and it's very different and very strange, but really interesting. How would you like working with Allison? She's fantastic. It's my second time. We did Scott Pilgrim with her. And she's just so good. And her character in Snowpiercer is great. She's perfect in it. Yeah, have you been watching the newsroom? No, I haven't. Is it great? Aaron Sorkin. Yeah, can't yeah. go wrong. We talk Joss Whedon. I say Aaron Sorkin. There you go. Really? Yeah. There's no other. And are you doing something with Michelle Monaghan? Is that yeah, we on? start that in about uh, three weeks. This movie called The Many Splintered Thing. You know, I read so many scripts. And this one script was just so different. It was just so unique. It's, I guess it's a romantic comedy, but it's kind of like the opposite of a romantic comedy. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's going to have a lot of interesting cinematic devices, you know, in the vein of like an Amelie or, uh, you know, like 500 Days of Summer, where they, they just, the, the camera has a lot of heavy lifting to do, and it's just going to be unique. There's, there's narration throughout, and it's, it's kind of told in the first person, and it's, it's just interesting and different. And... I, I just think of the world of Michelle. I think she's fantastic. She is. You're a busy man. I guess. When do you have time to do Chris Evans stuff? Like just You'd be, be surprised. I'm, I'm pretty lazy. <laughs> I got a lot of downtime. You are not lazy. You'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> so is it a redundant question to ask which has been which director has been the most influential in your life? The most influential in my life. I mean, I, I mean, well, Joss, given the fact that Avengers was so successful, I think that's been the most impactful as far as my career is concerned. Um, in terms of one-on-one uh, -on -one connections and an actual, you know, intimate um, work, um, Danny Boyle was pretty fantastic. When I did Sunshine back in 2005, Danny Boyle is just a really fantastic man to work for as an actor. Uh, not to say Joss isn't, but but Danny really had an impact. Yeah, he's an amazing director. Yeah. Well, you know, congratulations to you on Thank everything. You. Uh, we are so psyched to see, you know, everything, but of course, more Captain America, more Avengers, <laughs> everything. I mean, you can't get enough of those guys. It's so much fun to watch. And, Thank you. And uh, we have a lovely parting gift for you. Look at this. Am I getting luggage? Me too. Am you I getting luggage? <laughs> I'll take it. I need it. can never go wrong with luggage.